بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Dear my student accounting section So we will start lecture 8 So this lecture we discuss bond prices and yield chapter 10 In this chapter we have different topics About 5 topics in this chapter First topic different types of bonds Bond characteristics Bond default risk and rating, bond prices and yield, and the last topic is alternative measures of yield. For first topic, the different types or the various types of bond. So you are accounting sections, and you know these types of bond. Uh, First definitions of the bond or the main characteristics of the bond is the bond is basic fixed income securities. So we call fixed income securities so they are bond. Why? Because all coupon bond with fixed interest rate. So this is why fixed income securities main characteristics of bond bond with coupon with interest rate and this interest rate is fixed as definition of bond it's security the same as bond stocks so we call securities so in bond there are main characteristics and these characteristics is this security the issue of these securities obligate to pay or make payment for the bondholders over the time period means based on the permissions in the contract between the bondholder and the issuer. So the issuer should be for the bondholder the payment of this bond. And you know the payment of the bond is periodic interest rate, so annually or semi-annually, and bar or face value at the end of maturity. So there are obligation on the issuer. So if the issuers can't pay these obligations or this payment, so the bondholders can force this issue for liquidations or for bankruptcy so this why bondholder uh, have priorities compared to stockholders and preferred stockholders in the case of liquidation what are the different types of bond there are you know there are treasury bond and this bond a uh, treasury bond a uh, corporate bond municipal bond international bond so all these bond share in the same characteristics as basic fixed income security with fixed interest rate uh, but uh, the differences in the level of risk of this bond and the issue of this bond so treasury bond it's a free of default risk and this issued by government so this white treasury bond corporate bond issued by corporation or firm municipal bond so this issued by local state the same as in us you know there are different states so if the governor of this state want to finance so he can make issues for bond and this bond called municipal bond municipal bond the bond are free of any type of tax as federal tax or local tax whatever it's free of any type of tax so this is the main characteristics of municipal bond international bond so this bond uh, traded not only on so the main characteristics of bond in addition to fixed income securities so for any bond there are face or bar value uh, face or bar value so this 
bar value this is the payment uh, to the bond holder at the end of maturity so if the bond 10 years so at 15 years whatever at the end of this maturity so uh, the bond holder will receive the face value right whatever the price the bond holder buys this bond a premium or discount whatever or it buys this bond uh, during uh, its maturity whatever so at the end of maturity the holder of the bond will receive a face value or bar value a bond with coupon rate except all bonds with coupon rate except zero coupon uh, so the coupon rate fixed and this coupon may be annually or semi-annually and this coupon is percentage of bar value percentage of bar or face value so if face value 1000 and coupon rate 10% so this means any if, and the payment is annually so 100 annually during the maturity 100 dollar annually during the maturity so this characteristics for bond with coupon but there are zero coupon bond what's this bond this bond without coupon without interest rate so if you invest in this type of bond you buy this bond buy at discount price discount price means price less than its face value so at the end of maturity you will receive the face value so this means there is no any coupon payment for this bond you buy by price less than face value and at the end of maturity you will receive the face value no interest rate for this uh, bond so this is why called zero coupon bond so if you want this means all expected cash flow from this bond just the face value at the end of maturity bond and denture so this is the contract between the issuers and the bond holder so this is terminology for bond so if i ask you what uh, the contract between the issuer and bond holder is called so it's bond indenture this is the contract name main concept in bond is accrued interest so what is this accrued interest accrued interest is the interest that accrues for the seller from the buyer if this bond purchased between coupon payments so first i can explain uh, this concept for you by this way so now if we have two coupon payment if coupon payment uh, so this january so and this june and this December okay so now the coupon payment at the end of June so this semi-annual coupon end of June and at the end of December so now if you have this bond and you sell it at the end of June or at the end of December then is no there is no accrued interest from the buyer to you why because you get the whole interest for the period you hold this bond right because the bond will pay at the end of june so and you hold it to the end of june and sell it so no accrued interest but if you sell this bond at the end of august here so this august at the end of august so at this date you hold the bond from month one to eight right but you received the interest the first payment at the end of june so the next interest the buyer will receive it because he will buy at the end of august but the buyer will receive how much of interest the interest for six months the whole six months right but you will sell at uh, end of august 
so this means the seller hold the bond for two months right because he sell at end of august two months right and hold the bond for four months but at the end of december you receive the interest for the whole six months so this why you have to pay when you buy this bond you have to pay to the seller in addition to the market price of the bond you have to buy the interest for these two months because the seller was the owner for this bond during this period but you will receive this interest at the end of december so this why called accrued interest so this interest accrues for the seller from the buyer but when if the sale between coupon payment but if exactly at coupon payment no accrued interest because the seller if sell it at the end of june at the end of june he will receive the interest for the period he holds this bond so the buyer will hold the bond for the next period so he receives the whole interest no accrued interest but accrued interest if there are uh, the uh, purchase of bond between two coupon payments so a price quoted in financial pages not contain accrued interest means the market price quoted in financial pages without accrued interest so this why you have to calculate accrued interest because actual transactions price include this accrued interest in addition to uh, so this example to know how we calculate accrued interest and then invoice price or actual price uh, so suppose coupon rate is 8% paid semi-annually so coupon rate 8% paid semi-annually uh, 40 days uh, best uh, past since last coupon payment uh, quoted price $990 so the price given uh, here by dollar not quoted as financial pages so what is the accrued interest on the bond and what is the actual or invoice price so now coupon payment 8% so how much interest you will receive semi-annually so 8% times face value 1000 so 80 annually so the coupon paid semi-annually so we have to divide it 8% by 2 so 8% over 2 times 1000 so this means you will receive $40 semi-annually right so 40 days have passed since the last coupon payment last coupon payment semi-annually so there is no need to calculate how many days because it's already given for you so 40 days so this 40 days there are accrued interest because last coupon payment since 40 days right so the seller receives the coupon payment before these 40 days so if you are the buyer you will receive the interest for the whole six months including these 40 days so this is why you have to pay the interest for 40 days for the seller so how much is this interest so the interest for the sixth month is is 40 dollar for how many days so we used the year 365 days annually so half of the year 365 over 2 so 182.5 days so this 40 dollars for 182.5 days so if the seller accrues interest for 40 days how much is this 40 days equals from 182.5 right so semi-annual coupon 1000 times 800 over 8 percent over 2 it's 40 dollar but this 40 dollar for 182 days this 40 dollar for the day these days 184 days so now the seller 
accrues this interest for this 40 days. So if the same, if you use the scissor, so if 182.5 days equal to 40 dollar, so how much 40 days equal from this 182? So 40 dollar times 40 days over 182 days 0.5. So it's 8.77. So how much is the invoice price? Is the accrued interest plus uh, quoted price or market price 990 plus 8.77 is 998.77 so this is the actual price the buyer will pay to the seller as market price plus the interest accrues to the seller from the buyer because the buyer will receive the whole interest at the end of the year or at the time of payment of the coupon but the seller accrues number of days from this period. So this is why we have calculated accrued interest plus the invoice price. So we look at this problem. So suppose today, today's date is April 15. So now is April 15. Bond was 10% coupon pay it semi-annually so be careful if the payment is annual or semi-annually so the payment the two date of payment is January 15 and July 15 so this is the two coupon payments okay and now we are in April 15 so this bond is listed in Wall Street Journal as selling at ask price 10104 so ask price so ask price mean selling price so because for, for prices ask means selling price bid means purchase price okay so this is the market price so this is the selling price ask price uh 10104 what's this 10104 this how the bond prices prices in financial pages quoted as percentage from bar so what this means this 101 percent 04 from bar so bar is 1000 if bar given for you or face value or bar value so we'll use the bar or face value which is given for you but if not so we'll use bar value equals to one thousand one thousand dollar in all problems or in, a, in all situations so now if the price 101 from face value percentage 101 percentage if 101 so 101 percentage of face value multiplied by 1000 but now there are fraction in addition to this percentage so this fraction of one percent fraction of one percent so if this whole one it will be 102 percent but this fraction so the fraction quoted by this way so what this fraction one percent in bond so this rules one percent equals to 32 point or unit 32 okay so this means this fraction is four from 32 4 unit from 32 unit why 32 so this is how the bond uh, quoted in financial pages by this fraction by 1 over 32 means 1 percent equal to 32 unit so if 1 after the percentage 1 so this mean 1 after uh, from 32 2 from 32 33 no it will not be 33 because the total one is 32 unit so 31 you may find 31 so this means 31 over 32 means less than one okay as a fraction so you divided this four by the total units of one 32 right so this is how we calculate the price if what is given for you uh, as the price quoted in financial market uh, markets or financial pages so if you buy a bond from dealer today so if you buy so this means the purchase of this bond 
today hmm. today is april 15 so now the payment of coupon january 15 and july 15 so april between these two coupon payment so this means there are accrued interest so now we have to calculate first how much is the market price because what is given for us is the price as quoted in financial page or in wall street journal so we calculated we calculate the price in dollar then we calculate accrued interest so summation is the invoice price or this is the price as uh, the buyer will pay for the seller so how we calculate the price so reported price is 101 101 so percentage from bar plus 4 over 32 why again 4 over 32 because the 1 percent equals to 32 unit so the price now 101 percent and 4 unit from 32 this fraction from 1 so we must from bar so bar 1000 so the price will be 101 over 32 from bar so we calculate 4 over 32 as percentage because this percentage if we divide it 4 over 32 so you find it 0.125 4 over 32 equal to 0.125 okay so now we add this percentage because this percentage from 1 right to the whole percentage the whole percentage is 101 so now the price is 101.125 from bar so if we multiply this percentage by 1000 so the price will be 1011.25 right so this 101.125 times 1000 because it's a percentage from bar percentage from bar so now the price is 1011.25 so how much is accrued interest accrued interest so the two coupon payment january 15 and july 15 so april 15 between these two coupon payment right so now the dates given in this problem by months because we are at uh, april 15 so the coupon payment january 15 and july 15 so april 15 so what is uh, the number of months best from last coupon payment before april 15 so coupon payment was at january 15 right so from january 15 to april 15 at the time of purchase this bond this period for the seller because he was the owner of this bond to april 15 from january 15 to april 15 so from january to april so how many months hmm? february march april so three months from january 15 to april 15 three months so these three months the interest of these three months accrues to the seller from the buyer so how to how much the interest for these three months based on the coupon payment the coupon is 10 percent okay semi annually so how much will be the payment for each six months 10 percent over two times one thousand so 50 yes 50 50 dollar for the six months for each six months right so this means from january 15 to july 15 the buyer at july 15 will receive 40 uh, 50 dollars right 50 dollars so this 50 dollars for six months so the buyer hold this bond only from april 15 to july 15 means 
for three months and the previous three months the owner for this bond was the seller so the seller accrues interest for three months right if the whole six months the buyer will receive 50 so how much the interest for three months from this 50 so semi-annual coupon is 50 so how we calculate it 1000 bar value times 10 percent coupon rate over two so it's 50 dollars 50 dollar for six months so the seller accrues three months of this six months so this how we calculate accrued interest so this is the 50 dollar and this is the three months for the seller from from the total six months 50 dollar for the six months so this means from three months how much would be the payment or the interest 50 times 3 over 6 so it's 20 dollar so how much now is the invoice price or actual price is market price or quoted price plus accrued interest so now we understand how we calculate accrued interest and what is the concept of accrued interest so extra problem or for this accrued interest to understand this accrued interest so now i think you can solve this problem by yourself so bond with seven percent makes semi-annual coupon so seven percent this coupon payment uh, semi-annually uh, on january 15 and july 15 so there's two coupon payments wall street journal reports the ask price you know ask price is selling price for the bond on january 30 so this is the time of purchase this bond a market price at this time january 30 is 102 so the price quoted as in financial pages not by dollar so you have to calculate it first by dollar then you have to calculate accrued interest so what is the invoice price invoice price or actual price is the market price plus the accrued interest so uh, the coupon period has 182 days 182 days so you know semi-annually before in previous example we divided uh, the 365 over 2 so the period was 182.5 days so if the number of days not given for you you will use the year 365 but as this example he asked you to use coupon period means the semi annually is 182 days so you will use it 182 days but if not given for you by this way you will divide the 365 over 2 right so now coupon period 182 days for this coupon days how much is the interest rate based on coupon rate coupon rate seven percent so seven percent over two okay semi-annually seven percent over two times one thousand so it's 35 dollars so is this 35 for 182 days 182 days so report and for reported bond price the same as we calculated before it means 100 and 2 over 32 so percentage from bar a quoted price percentage from 100 over 100 plus 2 over 32 so you have to calculate how much 2 over 32 as percentage first then you add it to 100 right so if we calculate it we uh, get the price $1,000.625 because this if you divide it 2 over 32 you find it 0 0.625 right you added this 0 0.625 to 100 so 100 0 0.625 times 1000 is 1000 0.625 by the same way as we uh, did in previous example so this is a quoted price so accrued interest 
the semi annual coupon is 35 dollar this is bar value times coupon over 2 so this 35 for how many days for 182 so now 182 days uh, so the coupon payment uh, January 15 and July 15 and the bond is January 30 so January 30 so you the purchase of this bond January 30 so this means we obligate to calculate the period of accrued interest by days here why because the two coupon payment January 15 and July 15 so the bond sold at January 30 January 30 means from January 15 this between these two dates but from January 15 to January 30 how many days 15 days 15 days so the seller accrues only 15 days from the buyer 15 days how much is the interest for these 15 days if the interest for 182 days 35 so how much this 15 days equals from 182 so 35 this dollar this 35 dollars right this dollars 35 dollars Thirty-five dollars times fifteen days. These days over one hundred eighty-two days. Okay, fifteen over one hundred eighty-two. But the same as if you use Caesar. So uh, thirty-five dollars for one hundred eighty-two. So how much? Fifteen days equals from this 35 dollars so we find it's 2.885 dollars so now the invoice price or uh, mark the price invoice price or actual price will equal to the quoted price so this is the price we calculate 1000.625 plus the accrued interest so the total is 1003.51 so this any problems to calculate accrued interest or asking for invoice price or actual price so it will be the same as uh, this example so have three examples or one example and three problems and we solve all these examples and problems so the third topic in this chapter is default risk and rating so you know the bond is debt when the company issue bond so this means the company borrow from the bondholder so this debt and there are obligations from the company to pay for bondholder so this why the companies are different related to their credit level or level of credit of the company so this why the company rated um, there are rank or each company get rate based on its credit level so this is why we discuss default risk and rating because the company may default default means the company can't pay for bondholder so bondholder can force the company for liquidations for a uh, government bond so this free from default risk so default risk the same as credit risk so alternatives if you find this default credit the same so government bond it's because the government issues this bond so the government can pay for you on time so it's free from default risk but for companies corporate bond so the company may go bankruptcy so bondholder will not receive the whole payment they have been promised because the company promised the bondholder to pay for them so if the company can't pay so the bondholders and the bondholders will not receive the payment so the company may default or goes bankrupt so for bond uh, for the company when issued bond uh, may the company 
is it secured bond or unsecured bond? Secure the difference between secured or unsecured. So the assets used as collateral for this bond means if secured bond, secured bond. So this bond backed by assets of the corporation. This asset used as collateral, collateral for the bond means if the company can't pay for the bond holder so this assets collateral so this asset can use sell this assets and pay from this assets to bond holder so this is the meaning of collateral for uh, the bond so this why called secured bond but if unsecured bond unsecured it's there is no assets backed as collateral for this bond no assets backed as collateral for this bond unsecured so there are another terminology we can use it for unsecured bond what's this terminology is debentures debentures you remember endangers did you remember endangers hmm. what is the endanger endanger is the contract between the bond holder and the issuer right the issue here is the corporation right if the corporation but debentures debentures is unsecured bond so be careful of this differentiation between these two terminologies so and alternatives uh, for indentures so the contract between uh, the bond holder and the issuers uh, called so in the answers you may find debentures indentures any other uh, terminologies so indentures is a contract but debentures is unsecured bond so there are major companies uh, make rating for the bond so as um, modis investor service uh, standard and poor corporations fetish investor service so these large financial institutions so these institutions rank the companies according to their uh, level of credits El, uh, a rank for these companies at general so the uh, highest four major categories called investment grade so there are categories you know the rank as uh, by this way triple a double a a so triple b double b b and so on uh, so this rank the first four major categories from this rank called investment grade so this high level of credit but the uh, bond that have rating in lower major categories yani the lower than the four after these four categories the lower than these four categories called speculative grade or junk bond junk bond or speculative grade so the same concept uh, so now we have investment grade so this is the first four categories the lower categories than these four uh, categories called junk bond or speculative grade so these companies or these financial institutions uh, rank these companies based on different criteria so to get level one or two or three or whatever so based on specific criteria what are these criteria so the high level of credit level or the high of credit level is the firms with level of profitability so this is a criteria a level of profitability a high level of cash flow to debt high level of leverage high level of liquidity low level of financial leverage okay this is the criteria five criteria uh, used to rank these uh, companies uh, to get a specific grade if this company's investment grade or junk bond or a speculative grade so based on these five criteria uh, criterias and 
criteria and we use uh, these examples of these companies okay example of these financial institutions make these ranks so the fourth topic in this chapter is bond price and yield so uh, you know the bond price and yield we have different prices of bond so you may uh, find fair price or real price market price so how we calculate the price of the bond and the yield we have different types of yield as current yield uh, yield to maturity uh, yield to call um, compound realized rate yield to maturity so this different rate so we start by if you look at this equation so you calculate bond price you know did you remember present value equation present value so this bond b price p price bond this of bond price of bond okay so this price of bond uh, the present as the same as what is uh, the cash flow expected from bond if you invest in bond what is the expected cash flow the expected cash flow is periodic payment of interest rate so this is the cash flow if the same amount and for the same period we call this annuity so this annuity because you receive this payment annually or semi-annually and for a specific time of period and the same amount so we call this annuity so this we discount this annuity so this summations of all expected cash flow based on the maturity of the bond so this uh, this C it's a cash flow price of the bond so C interest or coupon payment and this from period 1 to T this T number of period to maturity if 10 years so T will be 10 15 years T will be 15 years years and uh, this R, this is the discount rate. So this is the discount, you use it to discount the cash flow. If semi-annually, so uh, semi-annually discount rate or semi-annually annual yield to, or the semi-annually yield to maturity. So based on, if most of the bond is semi-annually coupon, but if annually, so we'll use this R, the discount rate you will use to discount this expected cash flow. If annually, so you use it R. If semi-annually you divided this R by 2 but at the same time you multiply T by 2 if you divided R by 2 you multiply T by 2 right because this is a number of payment in the period if T 10 years so how many periods you will receive interest if the maturity is 10 years so 10 times 2 means 20 times you will receive this interest rate because you will receive it each six months so the rate for each six months will be r over two so this rule if r if semi-annually you divide it r by two and multiply t by two so the cash flow it's annuity the interest rate discount of summation of all this interest rate plus the last payment at the end of maturity the bar value or face value you discount it by 1 plus r to the power t the same r and the same t but this payment is lump sum one payment you will receive it at the end of maturity and this annuity payment you will receive it during maturity so the bond price you discount the whole expected cash flow so you calculate the bond price So for this example, calculate price of bond with semi-annual coupon 8%, uh, 10 years to maturity with yield 6%. So yield 6%, so the discount rate. The rate for uh, bond we call it yield to maturity because the bond has maturity, right? So this yield, if you hold this bond to the end of maturity, so this is why discount rate for bond called yield to maturity is six percent so now we have coupon rate eight percent maturity 10 years semi-annually so t will be huh, 10 times two uh, eight percent will divided by two and 
سوري 8% بيرسنت ذيس ذا كوبون ريت وي ديفايدد ذا يلد باي 2 6% بات 8% بيرسنت سو فروم ذيس كوبون ريت وي كالكوليت ذا بيمنت سيمي انوالي بيمنت اوف انترست هاو ماتش 8% بيرسنت ديفايدد باي 2 تايمز فيس فاليو سو فيس فاليو نوت جيفن هير سو يو ويل يوز ات 1000 سو هاو ماتش دولار يو ويل ريسيف ات ان اتش بيمنت بيمنت سيمي انوالي So for each six months, you will receive eight percent over two times one thousand. So this is the cash flow or interest. So look at the equation. So this C is annuity. This is the annuity, forty dollar, right? So multiply by present value of one dollar. Of one dollar, we receive it. How many times? Twenty times from one to twenty. By rate three percent. Look, we divide it six percent by two. It's three, and we multiply t ten years by two. It's twenty period, right? So this the present value of interest factor of annuity. So you you did you remember this equation? So you calculate this factor as ha huh, one minus one. Over one plus r to the power t. All this in numerator divided by r. So how much r you will use it in this factor? Three percent. How much t you will use it in this factor? Twenty. So you calculate present value of one dollar. You will receive it for twenty times by rate three percent. You multiply this present value of one dollar by forty dollars. So this is the present value of annuity of interest rate plus one thousand. See this lump sum you will receive it one time. So multiply by one over one plus r the same r three percent to the power twenty. Uh, so this is the present value factor of lump sum of lump sum just one over one plus r to the power t. Because we receive this one thousand one time at the end of maturity. So now these are two types of cash flow for any bond with coupon. So annuity, the interest rate. So factor of annuity times the annuity payment plus face value times the lump sum factor. So the price of the bond will be one thousand one hundred forty-eight point seventy-seven. So what is the relationship between this price when you calculate it? This present value equation is the same as if you calculate present value. What is the relationship between discount rate in the equation and the price? It's inverse relationship or negative relationship. Negative relationship between the price and the yield as any present value equation. So when the yield get very high, so the value of the bond will be very low. Negative relationship. So this diagram explains this relationship as inverse relationship between bond prices and yield. So this is a negative relationship between price and yield. So the last topic in this chapter is the different uh, measures of yield or alternative measures of yield. We have four types of yield. So be careful. When uh, there are questions for any type, so what are the differences between this yield and how you calculate each? So now, first yield is current yield. So this current yield is very easy. Just now, here is just definitions, but you may ask. Uh, questions about this current yield as calculation. So, how you calculate the current yield, or what is the concept of current yield? Is bonds annual coupon, annual coupon. So, this annual coupon payment means in dollars, not interest rate, right? The coupon rate you use coupon rate times face value. So, this is the annual coupon payment. The coupon payment in dollars. Divided by bond price means if this means if face value one thousand 
so coupon rate 12% bond price 800 hmm. calculate current yield current yield coupon annual coupon payment so 15 uh, 12% times 1000 is 120 so 120 dollars coupon payment okay in dollars divided by bond price bond price 800 so 120 dollars over 800 dollars equals to how much 15 percent 15 percent so this is the current yield if a current yield annual coupon payment in dollars over or divided by bond price the second type of yield is yield to maturity yield to maturity so what is the yield to maturity this is the same as discount rate we use it uh, in the present value equation right yield to maturity so uh, this is the discount rate that makes present value of the bonds payment equal to its price means this is the same as discount yield discount rate so this is the discount rate if you use it to equate a market price by present value of expected cash flow from the bond so this yield to maturity the same as the the same as the uh, IRR did you remember IRR internal rate of return so this the R equates an initial investment by the present value of cash flow so the same here because initial investment for you is the bond price you pay bond price so this is the investment you pay now so and you expected cash flow from this bond so the rate which equates the present value of expected cash flow with the bond price so we call this yield to maturity so this is the yield you get it if you hold the bond to the to the end of maturity and buy this bond by this price so how much is the yield to maturity okay the same present value equation we set bond price as a value for this equation and expected cash flow so r in this equation unknown so this r is the yield to maturity so you can calculate it by trial and error the same as, as irr or if questions at this one it will be multiple choice so you will find answers the multiple choice answers so you can use these answers to try uh, with the equation so to reach to the R which equates the present value of cash flow with the price so uh, we get this example suppose 8% coupon uh, paid semi annually coupon rate 8% uh, a maturity 30 years bond is selling at 1276.76 so this is the market price average rate of return would be earned by investors purchase the bond at this price so so ask you average rate of return so if price given and the coupon rate given right and the maturity so you know how much expected cash flow from this bond if you discount this expected cash flow by rate and the present value of this expected cash flow equal to the price so this will be the yield to maturity or the average return you earn on this bond if you hold this bond to the end of maturity so we'll use the same present value equation right but we set the price the price equals to so this is the annuity as we explained before right annuity equation and this lump sum right but in this equation before when we calculate yield to maturity when we calculate uh, a present value or the price of the bond the R was given right yield was six percent 
So we use it to discount cash flow, then we calculate the price. Now, the price is given and we want this R. We want R. This R unknown, right? So this Y, this annuity cash flow, coupon rate 8% semi annually, so it's $40. This is the amount of payment, semi annually payment. And we multiply T, T 30 years times 2, 60. And we divided R, so now if we use R, we divided R by 2, right? So we try by different R. So if we try by 6% divided over 2, means 3%, so 6 over 2, 3. So, and try 3% here as R, so we find the present value of expected cash flow equal exactly to this price 1276.76 so r is three percent right so r here is three percent because r he here semi-annually so this means it's six percent annually divided by two it's three okay so this is how you calculate yield to maturity the same equation when you calculate bond price, so this is the main equation in this chapter. You calculate bond price if the rate or discount rate or yield to maturity given for you. But if not given, the price will be given and the questions will be for R or for yield to maturity. So this, what is the yield to maturity? Discount rate that makes present value of bonds payment equals to its price. So you set price expected cash flow so you try with i with r right so this four yield to maturity we have the third yield is yield to call so for yield to call we will use the same equation of present value when we calculate the price or yield to uh, maturity but what is this yield to call so you know if there are Callability characteristics for the bond. So there are call price in the contract. If the issuer want to call this bond, he will call this bond by this price. So if you hold the bond to the call, your return will be different than the yield to maturity. Because yield to maturity, so the yield to the end of maturity. But if there are call, the call will be before maturity. So if you want to calculate the yield, you get it from this point to the end of the call. The same concept, but there are two differences. This not to the end of maturity. So date of the call will be instead of date of maturity because you will hold this bond only for call and the maturity of the bond it's you will not use the maturity of the bond but you will use the date of call right so it's like the yield to maturity except call date replaces the maturity so because there are call not to the end of maturity if the maturity 20 years and the call after five years so now the maturity for this bond you hold this bond only for five years right but the maturity 50, 20 years so date uh, call date will replaces maturity the maturity will call price replace the bar value yep. the call date will call price why because there are call date so you will not hold the bond to the end of maturity so instead of uh, date of maturity will use call date and at the end of the call you will receive call price not the bar value or face value right so you will use call price instead of bar value but the same equation so look at this example uh, suppose eight percent coupon paid semi-annually so 30 year bond maturity 30 year 
it sells for 1150 selling price and is callable in 10 years at call price 1100 uh, sale price 1150 the call price 100 1100 maturity 30 years but the co callable in 10 years the call in 10 years so calculate the yield to call for this bond yield to call so this means you hold this bond for 10 years why it's maturity 30 years but you hold it for 10 years why because the call this bond is callable in 10 years means after 10 years so the maturity will be 10 years and same annually you multiply by 2 it's 20 period okay so uh, you calculated the same as yield to maturity but instead of so the price how much is the price 1150 so this is the price initial price or the price uh, selling price for this bond equals to discount cash flow will be annuity the same but this annuity for 10 years only so this is the call date and plus instead of par value as we used before for yield to maturity we use call price how much is call price is 1100 so the equation will be by this way look at the equation so we set this price 1150 so equals to the pay, uh, semi annual payment 40 because the coupon is 8% 8% over 2 times 1000 so this annuity annuity for how many period so the call after 10 years and same annually so the maturity from 1 to 20 so 20 period and instead of bar we use call price instead of bar we use call price and instead of uh, maturity date we use call date Okay, so if we buy trial and error the same, so the rate will be 6.64%. So this is for yield to call. So there is no differences. We use the same equation except instead of call, instead of maturity, we use call date. Date of maturity, we use call date. Instead of bar value we use call price the same as if you calculate yield to maturity but for the period you hold this bond until the call so what is the last payment you will receive call price not bar value so this is how you calculate yield to call so the last yield is realized compound yield to maturity realized compound yield to maturity so what this rate a different rate so this rate rate of return realized over the period or the life of the bond but based on forecasting you forecast the reinvestment rate of coupon means if we want you to calculate this rate so reinvestment rate will given for you so you know this realized compound yield to maturity right a rate of return you are you realized on your bond the same as actual return if you forecast or estimate how much the rate you will use it to reinvest the coupon rate so for yield for yield to maturity the assumption is when you calculate it the assumption is you use the same discount rate to reinvest the interest so is this in yield to maturity on in present value equation the assumption is you use the same discount rate to compound the interest rate or to invest the interest rate right but if you forecast then there are different rates you will use it to reinvest the interest rate so this rate will called 
realized compound yield to maturity realized right so what this realized or how you calculate this realized yield to maturity so first we explain this rate in simple examples to understand it means maturity just two years for bond and we'll get extra example by longer maturity so now if you have two year bond with bar value 1000 so in maturity two years bar value 1000 making annual coupon payment so it's given so in some examples annual coupon given for you by dollar or uh, as payment in dollar or uh, coupon rate and you multiply coupon rate by face value is the same so now 100 annually and bar value 1000 if coupon reinvested so just you find reinvested rate so you know the questions will be for realized compound yield realized compound yield if there are forecasting rate you will use it to reinvest the interest rate but if again and yield to maturity or present value equation at general the assumption is we will use the same discount rate to reinvest the interest rate but if there are forecasting and will you reinvest the interest rate by different rate so this realized compound yield to maturity so the questions here calculate realized compound yield so now for how much will be the total value of your investment so now if we use this reinvestment rate eight percent right so how much is the total value the total proceeds of your investment if you invest this bar value right you pay bar value and you get annual coupon 100 for two years right if you reinvest the interest rate by how much by eight percent so how much will be your total wealth or your proceeds after the two years hmm? in first years you will receive the coupon payment 100 right at the end of first year 100 so at the end of second year you will receive the coupon rate plus bar value so 1100 but the 100 coupon for the first year you reinvest compound reinvest this coupon by eight percent so for first year 100 i receive this 100 at the end of first year but i reinvest it to the end of second year because I calculate the proceeds at the end of second year invested by 8% so this 100 will be 108 at the end of two years plus at the end of the two years I will receive the second 100 the interest for the second year plus the bar value because the whole maturity one two years so now the value of the investment was reinvestment coupon so for first year this is the value at the end of the two years the 100 of the first year will be 108 because i will reinvest it for one year by eight percent but for the interest for second year and the bar value or face value i will receive it at the end of second year so it will be the same 1100 so the total is 1208 what this is the value of my investment after the two years if i reinvest the interest by eight percent so how much you pay for this wealth after two years how much you pay now you pay now one thousand right so you pay one thousand and you will receive it after two years as one thousand two or eight right so this means how much your compound or realized compound your compound yield to maturity to the end of the two years so this 1000 if you multiply by one plus r what this r this yield realized compound yield this is a yield you want to know when you reinvest by eight percent it this value equals to 
your proceeds or your total wealth of this investment by this way the investors purchase the bond for bar 1000 and this investment grow to 1208 right so now you pay 1000 and you will receive at the end of two years 1208 so how much is your realized compound yield in simple way if you multiply this 1000 by one plus this yield it should equal 1208 by this way so this 1000 this your investment this is a bar value you pay bar value this is a, the price you pay for this bond right times one plus if this r one plus r to the power two the same as if you calculate future value right if you calculate future value so this present value b if you multiply one by one plus y to the power two the realized y here is to be different than r because this realized rate of return so one plus realized to the power two you compound by this rate right so this equal to 1208 this is the amount you will receive at the end of the two years this future value and this present value so one times the same as one times r present value times one plus r to the power t equal to future value right so now we have present value we have the amount we pay we have the future value so we want the r so this r one plus r to the power two so how we get this one plus r to the power two if we divide it one 208 over 1000 so this 1 plus r to the power 2 so if you get a square root for this value so this is the realized return or 9.91 okay so I try to calculate it by uh, your calculator so divided 1 208 over 1000 right then get square root because this is the power 2 so this will be 1 plus the yield right so minus 1 it will be the yield calculated it will be 9.91 right or so realized to be easy for calculation yield to maturity so you can calculate it by this way it will be easy then you divide it and then the same so now this is the proceeds this is the proceeds the future value divided by the price 1208 divided by 1000 okay so it will be 1 plus y to the power 2 so you want 1 plus r so this y you get a square root of this value and the square root it will be 1 plus r right so minus 1 it will be r or yield so it's better to use this equation it will be easy because uh, for different example so uh, maybe maturity uh, 20 years 30 years 15 years so it will be 1 plus y to the power 30 to the power 15 so it's better to calculate it by this way uh, proceeds over price minus one but uh, we called here square root y because is two square root but if 20 so it will be huh, root 20 if 15 root 15 right so it's easy to calculate root 15 for this value proceeds over price then root this proceeds over priced based on the maturity then minus one minus what at the end after you calculate the root okay if you calculate this for the same example so 1208 over 100 look it's first 1208 over 100 then we get square root for this value what is square why square root because it is the power two but if 20 so we get root 20 15 root 15 then minus 1 so it will be 0.0991 so times 100 it's 9.91 percent 
so this is how we calculate realized rate of return so we'll go to more depth in this calculation for another example Uh, this example is extra example to know how we calculate uh, realized compound yield to maturity. So suppose you buy uh, 30 years, 7.5 annual payment coupon bond for 980. Coupon rate 7.5. 7 uh, you buy the bond by 980 dollar. But you plan so maturity is 30 years of this bond and you plan to hold this bond for 20 years only means you will invest in this bond for 20 years so what about after the years after this 20 years so there are 10 years remaining in maturity but you will sell this bond after 20 years only because you invest only in 20 years so you forget that uh, that the bond yields to maturity will be eight percent when it's sold because you will sell it after 20 years when you sell it the yield to maturity 8% and reinvestment rate is 6% so reinvest if the, you find the reinvestment rate so this means the questions will be calculate the realized compound yield on your investment realized compound yield on your investment so by the same concept we have to calculate the future value of the proceeds you will receive from this bond if you invest it for 20 years based on coupon rate so this annuity the same concept if you hold the bond to the end of maturity you will receive face value but now you will hold the bond only for 20 years and maturity 30 years so this means at the end of 20 years you will receive what you will receive the selling price because you will sell it after this 20 years so uh, you will be the yield to maturity eight percent when it sold this bond so now what is the expected cash flow from this bond the annual or annual interest rate for how many years for 20 years plus the selling price so this is the future value so how much you will pay now 980 so you can calculate the realized compound yield on your investment on two steps first the price you will sell this bond not given for you but what is given for you yield to maturity at uh, at the time you sell this bond so you can calculate the price so you know how to calculate the price from first equation we use to calculate the bond price is the same as present value equation the price equals to discount the all expected cash flow from this bond and we have the discount rate the yield to maturity eight percent so now you invest in this bond for 20 years right so what is the remaining in the maturity of this bond 10 years means when you sell this bond the buyer will get bond with maturity 10 years so you calculate the price for expected cash flow for 10 years 10 years right so now by this way to understand this maturities right so this maturity is from uh, zero when you buy to 30 years Okay, so now you hold the bond for 20 years here. 20 years. So this is the when you calculate future cash flow for this period because you invest in this bond for 20 years. Now you will sell this bond here. Here, okay, you will sell it here. If you sell it here, so you sell bond with maturity huh how many years 10 years 10 years only so the buyer will buy bond with maturity 10 years so this buyer at the end of maturity will receive interest for 10 years 
and bar value at the end of maturity so this why you want to know how much the selling price because for you it will be the value you will receive it at the end of maturity because your maturity 20 years so this why first we have to calculate the price of this bond sale price or selling price so it's annual coupon this is annually so 7.5 times 1075 right so you calculate expected cash flow for how many years to calculate seven uh, selling price for 10 years for 10 because you sell here and the remaining of maturity 10 years right so uh, so this why the t from 1 to 10 and this uh, present value of annuity because you will receive interest for 10 years you multiply annuity by present value of one dollar of annuity by rate eight percent so this yield to maturity when you sell this bond and for 10 periods and this at the end of maturity you will receive the face value because you will be at the end of 30 years so at the end of maturity you receive face value so face value times uh, present value factor of lump sum 1 over 1 plus the same yield to the power 10 so you calculated you find the sale price is 966.45 so this is the amount you will receive at the end of your investment period because you invest only for 20 years right so the second amount you have to know is the future value for interest rate so now you invest for 20 years so annually you will receive 75 so this annuity but you multiply this annuity by future value of interest factor of annuity right so because you calculate if you during the 20 years annually you will receive 75 so how much will be the future value of interest rate so the total proceeds will be the future value of your interest rate plus the price so future value of 20 years uh, 75 dollar you will receive it annually uh, annuity with interest rate 6 percent so this is the reinvestment rate so future value because the assumption this realized compound rate of return there are reinvestment rate different than yield to maturity so reinvestment rate six percent so we calculate future value for annuity so you know the equation of future value of annuity so this future value factor right what's how you calculate this future value it's you know it from uh, finance so it's one plus r to the power t minus one over r so this future value of annuity so this is a factor right this is a factor means this future value of one dollar you will receive it 20 times at rate six percent so you will receive 75 not one dollar so you multiply 75 by future value of annuity so the future value of the interest will be 2758.92 so now the total proceeds will be the future value of your interest plus a selling price this is the total proceeds during 20 years a price the price we calculated you will receive it at the end of 20 years plus the future value of interest rate so this is the total proceeds so we'll use the same equation to calculate y or yield uh, to compound yield to maturity so this is the proceeds total proceeds and obey price as given 980 so 980 this is the price i pay to this bond times one plus yield or realized yield to maturity so i invest for 20 years to the power 20 so equals to total proceed the same equation we used before right so we can divide it this total proceeds over 980 so this one plus y to, to the power 20 then we get a uh, root of 20 minus one so by this way so the yield will be 6.90 or to calculate it by this way 
realized yield to maturity by the equation it's uh, root proceeds over price minus one so proceeds 3725.37 over the price 980 and drew 20 why because we invest for 20 years the maturity is 20 year minus one so first you divide it then calculate the root and the end minus one equals to 6.90 so this is how we calculate uh, compound realized yield to maturity so the last concept in this chapter is premium and discount bond you know the bond may sell at bar or at premium or discount premium or discount from bar so uh, how can you know if this bond with premium or discount so premium or discount based on the relationship between the coupon rate coupon rate so this coupon rate will be in nominator you will use it to calculate annual payment or coupon payment and the discount rate or market interest rate right if coupon rate in nominator the same as the discount rate the interest rate in denominator so the bond uh, sell at par if coupon rate greater than discount rate the bond sell at premium if coupon rate less than discount rate the bond sell at discount so this is the main rules or relationship so bond premium coupon rate exceeds market interest rate market interest rate is discount rate we use it in denominator coupon rate in nominator right so is this premium bond so for premium bond all bond at the end of maturity will be at bar so if this bond sell by price higher than bar this means during maturity the price will decline to reach to bar and the opposite for discount bond discount bond coupon rate less than market interest rate or market interest rate the discount rate exceeds the coupon rate coupon rate lower or market interest rate higher it's better to start by coupon rate coupon rate is lower to know if coupon rate lower than discount rate lower it's discount coupon rate higher than discount rate it's a premium right so now if discount means this bond sell at price less than bar so what will happen to the price during this period so the price will decrease will increase to reach to bar because this sell on discount the price will increase to bar value over its maturity so this what will happen to the price during the maturity if the bond at sell at premium means higher than bar value so its price will decrease to the end of maturity if the bond sell at discount so the price will increase over its maturity so as this uh, so this diagram explains this relationship look if this bar value 1000 so whatever the maturity so you will at the end of maturity you will receive the bar value Okay, we receive the bar value. This if the bond sell at bar. If the bond sell at premium, so at price higher than bar value. So during the maturity, the price will decrease to reach to bar because all bond as maturity, you will receive the bar value. If the bond sell at discount means price less than bar. So what will happen during maturity? During maturity, the price will increase to reach to bar. So this is a relationship or between uh, premium and discount bond between interest rate uh, and coupon rate or market rate and coupon rate. So this is the end of this chapter uh, for bond price and yield. So next lectures will be uh, stock valuation. 
سی یو ان شاء اللہ تھینک یو